Broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Hello, my name is Doug Merrill with Chiasma. Um, I'm a senior consultant and developer for Chiasma and I've been working with and around a number of different companies and clients uh, from many different verticals and industries. And so uh, I've been asked to provide a webinar uh, about some administrative techniques that we can do to uh, to maximize and take advantage of our Salesforce.com instance. And one of the things that uh, I wanted to talk about today was the use of custom labels in Salesforce. Um, now, I've been using Salesforce for some time, but only recently I've actually started taking advantage of this feature. And, and it was something I didn't understand the impact until I had actually taken advantage of it and used it. So I want to talk a little bit about what they are and what they can do. So a custom label, let's actually navigate to where uh, we can see our custom label. By the way, before I go any further, if you have any questions, please post them in the webinar, the questions section, and I'll come back to those after I'm done going through the presentation. Um, so as I go through, uh, log any questions, and then we'll revisit those in a minute. But uh, one of the things that, uh, that we want to do is let's, let's navigate, and I'm actually going to show you where custom labels are, and then we'll talk about what they can do. <clears throat> so in your Salesforce instance, depending on what version you're on, if you go to your setup link in your basic administrative uh, interface and come over here to App Setup, there's a section that says Create, obviously, and there's one section that says Custom Labels. So if we click on Custom Labels, I've got a couple here in my dev uh, environment that I'm mostly just using for testing, but here's where you can capture and create custom labels. Now, a custom label is really just a string or a text value that you're going to assign to a label that you're going to use later on in the system. And the places where you're going to reference that label is going to be in, say, a Visual Force page or in some sort of Apex code that you're capturing somewhere. And here, and I'm going to explain why you would never do that. So let's pretend that I have a Visual Force page. And whenever I make a change to the Visual Force page on a Visual Force site or if there's an Apex controller that's riding off of that Visual Force page or something, I don't always want to have to go into my code and make a change um, just because I want to change some text on my Visual Force page or something like that. So let's create, just for kicks, let's come over here and create a custom label. I'm going to click on New Custom Label, and I'm going to call this my Webinar Label. And in this Webinar Label, I'm going to put um, just some text. This is an example of how my label works. And then we'll click Save. OK, so I've created a label, a label, and here's the value. This is an example of how my label works. Now I'm going to go over here and I'm going to create a Visual Force page, just a very simple one. And we're going to call this our webinar Visual Force page. And we are going to add the label into the Visual Force page, like so. Oops, I'm going to just reference my label. Oh, crap. One second. Let's grab my label right here, and we will put the label into and take a look at it. So. To call a label in a Visual Force page, you simply put label and then the name of the label. We call it webinar label. And now if I click save, oh that's right. If I click save, assuming I did everything right, we'll click save. Line 5, hang on a second here. There we go. Create a simple Visual Force page and preview my page. What it's going to do is it's going to pull in my label. I can see right here. This is the text that I created in my label. Now, where this is valuable is suppose I don't want to actually change my site or my Apex or my Visual Force page. What I'm actually going to want to do is I'm going to come in here and say, you know, I don't want to change the page, but my admin team may want to. So I'm going to come in. And whoever needs to manage that label can come in and change this to this is not an example or this is where I changed 
the text value, click Save, and then I'm going to reload my Visual Force page, and that will change my text. This is where I changed the text value in my Visual Force page. So what you can do is you can create up a series of labels and have certain people responsible for making those changes. And now nobody changes your Visual Force page. They're only changing the output and the output of text that's going to be on that page. So some examples is if you have an intra intranet website or something like that and certain people are responsible for changing the content of certain parts of a page, you can assign or just say, hey, you're in charge of um, adjusting the the help text or the text um, regarding some sort of content in the page, maybe an article or something like that. They can go in and you just say, okay, you're, you're responsible for changing this label and adjusting it. So they can go in and make that change anytime they want. It simply reflects on the page. And at no point do you need to actually change your, your visual force markup or anything like that. It simply renders on the page the way that you want it to. So now the advantage to this also is not just the visual force pages, but it also uh, can be an advantage within um, your Apex code. So for example, triggers and classes. I actually have, um, I believe, let's click save on that. Let's actually open up our developer console and I'm going to show you what I mean by this. <clears throat> developer console is a great tool if you're going to um, execute some Apex code, but as an administrator, if you've got someone who's doing some development and there's parts of that development that you may ever want to change, or there's parts of that code that you say, well, I may need to change that value to something else. The problem with changing Apex code is after you change it, you have to change it in Sandbox, and then you got to uh, go through some test code changing and stuff like that and promote that back up into production, where the change may just be minor, and you just need something to be changed. So one thing to think about, so for example, what records need to be updated when something takes place in Salesforce, is maybe I want to use a custom label, to change exactly what's going to be happening. So I'm going to show you a piece of code and we're going to go through it and I'll show you where the custom label is being used. So let's click on my debug right here and open up my execute anonymous window and this is a location where you can simply execute Apex code without uh, having to create an interface for it or have a trigger or anything like that. What I've done right here is I have a string called account name and that account name is referencing a label that I've created called account label. So let's look at that account label real quick here. Uh, let's minimize this. And we will look at our labels. So let's come over here and look at our custom labels. I created a label and I call it the account label. And if I look at that account label, there's a string in it that says help system. Now in my accounts, I have a number of accounts that are called they actually have health system in the name. So for example, Beaumont Health System, Adventist Health System. Now in my Apex code, I'm actually referencing, I'm actually referencing this label, which would be health system, and then I'm doing a query for a list that's actually going to pull up this account name that I assigned that label to, and it's going to do a like function, so it's going to look for anything that's within that label where any account where the name is like health system, right? So if I execute this, let's make sure that's going to execute. Give me a second here. Sometimes developer console is a little buggy. If I execute this code, which is still didn't execute. Hang on a second here. All right, hang on a second. It's a little buggy. Give it a moment. If I come in and execute, this time it should execute, I hope. And it still hasn't, so one second. Oh, but if this doesn't execute, then I'll just explain it to you. But what should be happening is when I execute this code, 
and the developer console is not uh, cooperating with me. And I check my debug log. What it'll do is it'll actually show me the fact that I've, I've pulled in both of my accounts. And this time it's not executing. This is an old log. So, so for example, if I come in and I have a label that's called um, account label health system, in my Apex code, I'm actually referencing that um, right inside my code. where it says label.account label. Right here. And so it's going to look for anything that has health system within the name and then execute that. But let's suppose I want to change it from health system to GPO or something like that, some other text value. You can make that change in your label and then your Apex code will execute and make that change so you don't actually have to go into your Apex code and make any changes at all because it's simply referencing a label. And then you can have other people manage how that should be working. So you could say, I've got my finance team uh, is allowed to make a few changes to these text values which are passed into strings and can therefore um, determine whether certain parts of code are executed or in what manner they're executed if you formulate it, if you formulate it appropriately and design it in such a way that people can grab that code uh, and, and, and grab those labels the, the appropriate way. So it takes, takes a little bit of coordination between you and your developers, but if you plan that ahead of time, maintenance can be really simple on your Apex code if you're going to be making changes from time to time. Or perhaps even seasonal changes or different things like this. You can pass in different values and then use those in your code um, to execute in different manners if, if you choose to make those types of changes. Now, custom labels are extremely valuable when you're dealing with multiple languages as well, especially on visual course pages and public knowledge bases. So if you're using Salesforce's articles function and you're using the public knowledge base with a public site to view your knowledge, labels become extremely valuable in the sense that if you have uh, uh, multiple languages and translations um, enabled in your organization, you can see right here our account label is in English and, but if we can also capture that same account label in Spanish, Finnish, German, French, or whatever language we want, and then based on whatever parameter you set for language to be determined inside your visual course pages, you can actually have the page display all of its content. If you store it in labels, you can have all of its content come in in the appropriate language just by having that parameter laying in your visual course page determined as to what it is. And then it'll look for the appropriate language and post all of that on your page. Now that does take a fair amount of work, but keep that in mind. It's extremely valuable, so you don't have to create multiple pages for every single language. You just have one page, but you can pass all of its content in via labels, and then you don't have to worry about making any changes or multiple pages. You simply, uh, when, when that uh, language parameter is set, they come in in the appropriate language. Um, so that's the vast majority of what labels is for. Once again, to reiterate, visual force pages where content may need to change, labels is extremely valuable, and each label value can hold up to uh, 1,000 characters. So it's not huge, but uh, you can fit a paragraph within that value. So if you've got a help text or, like I said, anything else that you need displayed on a page, you can put 1,000 characters in here and then have somebody manage that at any time. Apex coding, so if you've got a trigger, or if you've got some sort of an Apex class, however the values may change, or you may need somebody to be able to manipulate them. If you talk with your developers beforehand and come up with a plan so that you can change that, um, so for example, record types, profiles, things like this, who's allowed to do certain things. We did a, a project just recently where we had a profile. We actually just created a profile label. I just created a, a custom label and we called it uh, uh, Enabled Profile, I think is what we called it. And then within that custom label, we just listed all of the profiles that were allowed to execute certain functions in our Apex code. And then uh, we just put the label inside the code that said if, uh, uh, if profile equals Enabled Profile or if, ena if uh, Enabled Profile is like um, you know, the, cur the current user profile, you know, execute the code. And then and that would change occasionally. They'd have to go back and remove a profile or two based on, you know, changes of, of season. I think there's some seasonal changes where they only wanted certain people to be able to execute certain things at certain times. And in turn, they could manage it that way. They didn't actually have to change any Apex code. They would simply come in 
and make a change to the label, and in turn it would affect the uh, the Apex code and execution. So um, that's the vast majority of what I wanted to cover today on custom labels. Um, let's take a look real quick to see if anybody has any questions. Um, uh, if you have a question now, it'd be great. Um, that was the majority of what I wanted to cover. Like I said, the first thing I want you to do probably is to go through and create a couple custom labels. If you have translations enabled in your organization, probably create some uh, some different translations of, of uh, a couple of custom labels, and then try to embed some of some visual course pages, and you'll see the value that you can get behind that. Um, and then you don't have to have a people playing around with your visual course pages. You can be you can simply say, okay, go and change the label, and the page will in turn be uh, be affected. You don't have to actually change anything within the page code itself or in the Apex code itself. I would encourage you to all uh, take advantage of this and, and get get to using uh, your custom labels, especially when you're working on development projects. Your Apex code and your Visual Force code uh, can be highly, highly customizable, even more usable when you're using uh, custom labels. Um, and that's the majority of what our web webinar is about today. So if you have a question, please ask it now. Um, otherwise, I think we'll be shutting it down. Um, and I appreciate everyone's uh, attendance today. So we'll give it a second and see if there's any questions. And I got one question here, it says, oh, no, it doesn't look like. Okay, well, that's all we had to cover then. All right, well, I appreciate everybody's attendance. Next week, hope you join us again for the Ask the Admin training. Come in, maybe you'll learn something new. Like I said, this is a feature that I actually uh, uncovered not too long ago, to be honest, and I've been using Salesforce for some time. Uh, but once I uh, uncovered the value, I think, I think I'm going to be using it uh, quite a bit more often. Anyway, keep that in your discussion with your developers, and you guys have a great day. Appreciate it. Thanks.